Las Vegas Aces go head to head in Michelob Ultra Arena. Happy Mother's Day to all the fantastic women serving in that role and that capacity. And fans certainly pumped up for what is to be a great 26th year of the WNBA as we say hello and welcome you in alongside the fabulous LaChina Robinson. I'm Tiffany Green. Well, the major storyline, or at least one of them, in the offseason, the hiring of the WNBA great Becky Hammond returning to the league and now as the head coach of the Las Vegas Aces. Yes, Becky Hammond is back. She was a six-time All-Star in 16 seasons as a player, then went on to the NBA to make history as an assistant coach, but she is back to lead the Aces as their head coach. And she has the 2020 MVP in Asia Wilson as a part of that core. And there's Sue Bird on the other side, the ageless wonder for the Seattle Storm. They are always in contention. Part of that big three, Brianna Stewart in the circle, jumping it off with Wilson. And it's the Storm that controls the tip. So much excitement here inside the arena as the home opener kicks off and Jewel Lloyd and the Storm get on the board courtesy of a triple. Lloyd who had a fantastic season a year ago. And the Aces coming off their win in the opener against the Phoenix Mercury and Jackie Young had a good look from the corner, no dice. Could this very well be the last season for Sue Bird playing in year 19? She thought about it, decides to try to take it, finds as he McElgore off the mark, and here comes Kelsey Plum, last year's sixth woman in the year in the WNBA. Both of these teams will be challenged defensively to pick up in transition. They both like to get out and run and keep the pace high. Well, they like to get out and run, and you saw a great example of it there, just quickly moving in the half-court set. Yeah, great slip there by De'Erica Handy. Well, that's yeah. what I mean in terms of the pace of this game. You better keep your eyes open because these teams will get up and down the floor. At that time, Brianna Stewart getting loose for an open jumper. Top two scoring teams in the league out of 2021. As the Aces wanting to push the pace all the more, they scored 89 points a season ago. And Asia Wilson, who anchors there, troubled by McAvoy, but getting the ball back, and the Aces are able to convert. A little pump up for Asia Wilson early on. And Jackie Young comes up a little gimpy, but that's called not giving up on the play. Las Vegas keeping the energy in that possession right here. Brianna Stewart and Jackie Young both going for the ball, but Young is as strong, as tough as they get. Gets the ball to Asia Wilson. Wilson in her fifth season as a pro, oftentimes getting to the free throw line. As this team last year made several trips to the charity stripe off the mark there. It's a 5-4 lead early on for the visitors. Noticing some new faces on the group. Gabby Williams apart. As we welcome you into Michelob Ultra Arena, the home opener for the Las Vegas Aces as they take on the Seattle Storm along with LaChina Robinson. I'm Tiffany Green, the Becky Hammond era beginning for the Aces. Yeah, really exciting time in Las Vegas as Becky Hammond has returned to the WNBA. She spent 16 seasons here as a player, went on to the NBA, made history as an assistant coach, but she is back and there's a lot of excitement here in Sin City. Obviously so, because she has the 2020 MVP in Asia Wilson, who had that one stripped away, but they return a major part of their core for a group that made it to the semifinals last year in the WNBA playoffs. Yeah, they have a majority of their core from last year, some departures, some changes, but a different system, which we're excited to continue to watch develop under Becky Hammond, a more spread offense, more read and react, more flow. And a great rebounding team, and you see there Asia Wilson cleaning up the glass to give the Aces the lead. Just outstanding energy from Asia Wilson to start this game. The Seattle Storm, 21 and 11 from a season ago. They were able to notch their season opening win against Minnesota. 
Brianna Stewart and Jewel Lloyd led the way and a whistle on the other end. Offensive foul called against the Aces. Jackie Young. I was wondering what the matchups would look like for Vegas. They're going to put Jackie Young on Sue Bird. She's probably going to be very physical with Sue on cuts, definitely using her size. They'll try not to switch, but they will do a little bit of that when they have to. And De'Erica Hamby is going to guard Brianna Stewart. Well, away from the ball, Chelsea Gray picks up her first personal foul. Seattle featuring their big three with Sue Bird, Brianna Stewart, a healthy Brianna Stewart, and Jewel Lloyd, who had a sensational year in 2021. And Stewie working to make sure she gets back into that form because, again, coming off an off-season Achilles surgery to fix a few things, and she says she's ready to go. And that was an in-rhythm shot for Brianna Stewart and a very in-rhythm shot for Asia Wilson. And what I like about this new spread offense for Vegas, we'll see more of Asia Wilson at the elbows. And to me, that's when she's at her best, when she has space to create. Gabby Williams, one of the additions in the offseason for the Storm off the mark there. Chelsea Gray in her second year with the franchise. A fantastic guard and couldn't finish there on the fake. Lloyd pulls up that contested three tough and Kelsey Plum comes away with it out and running. And that's that speed and transition we already talked about. Kelsey Plum wants to push and get to the rim. Yes, this team is going to shoot more threes. Again, they will have a more spread offense. But the number one objective is to try to put pressure on the defense in the paint. And Kelsey can do that. Well, Plum coming off a 20-point performance in that win over Phoenix Friday. One of three scores and double figures for the Aces. It has been so fun to watch the progression of Kelsey Plum's career over the years. Number one pick in 2017, missed 2020 with an Achilles, but said she feels like this is her season. And in this offense, you can see that because Becky Hammond wants her players to trust what they can do between the lines and to make reads and just be aggressive in finding their shots. Brianna Stewart leading with four points on the other end for the Storm. Jewel Lloyd off the mark there. De'Erica Hamby coming down with the rebound, running the floor. She had 24 in the season opening win, and there she registers her first two of the game. And you see that offense, which is set up high, leaving plenty of space on the interior for the cuts, and Hamby is great at it. And right now, the Aces starting to get it rolling. Great no-look pass from Gray. Getting out, running back the other way in transition. Here's Bird chasing down the ball. Open corner three. Can't hit. Well, this pace is not for the faint at heart and coming out with fireworks immediately as everyone tries to kind of catch their breath because, I mean, they're just like a little track meet going up and down this court. And there's freedom to attack. Remember the Las Vegas Aces offense a year ago was let's get it inside, maybe slow it up on some of the possessions, though they were a high-paced team last season as well, but they were looking to pound it inside to Cam Beige and Wilson, but now everyone has the green light. Well, you mentioned Becky Hammond and leaving her fingerprints on this program. Many tenants coming over from the time she spent with the San Antonio Spurs and the all-time winningest coach in the NBA and Greg Popovich. Fast pace. And there were a lot of people that were surprised that Becky left the NBA to come to the WNBA. And she has always basically said, I don't know why, this is home for me, you know? And she wanted the opportunity to be a head coach. That was the important aspect of leaving the NBA. She could be a head coach right away here. And so excited about this group that she's coaching this season. She said, I'm having so much fun, and this is only game two. Right now, the Aces on a 14-2 run, and the Storm need to find an answer. Jewel Lloyd, tough shot in the lane. And you notice every time Seattle misses, the Aces are right there on the glass, and they are ready to run. The pull-up. 
Plum can't hit. Seattle, Stewie, yes. Brianna Stewart struggled in the first half of their last contest against Minnesota. Not so much tonight. She's back. Seven points already for Brianna Stewart. Resigned earlier this year. Jackie Young with the ball fake inside, and yes, it goes. Really confident start to the season for Jackie Young. 20 points in Phoenix. Played great defense on Diana Tarazi as well. Yeah, the defense is so far looking sharp and some revenge returned at the start of the season. Remember, they went the distance with Phoenix last year. Timeout taken on the court. If you're watching on ESPN News, make sure you come back with us on the other side on ESPN 2. We'll see you soon. The entertainment capital of the world, Las Vegas. They have a star in Asia Wilson. We got a chance to talk to her earlier today about some of the improvements that she wanted to make from last year to now. Honestly, I felt like I didn't give it my all mentally. Uh, I think I wasn't bought in mentally. I kind of checked out because it was just a lot. It, it was a lot that I felt like I probably could have handled better, but I didn't. And I left my team shorthanded. And uh, I felt that all come out and on my shoulders when we lost here to Phoenix. And it was tough. It was really, really hard. Um, but this year, I felt like I, I'm not going to put my teammates in that situation ever again. Uh, I owe them everything. They've dug me out of plenty of holes. Uh, so I have to be there for them regardless of the situation that I may be dealing with mentally. So I think that was the biggest kind of mind space that I was just I just lacked last year. I was really impressed when we sat down with Asia Wilson today with her level of maturity and awareness. And when you look at what's happened in her career, I mean, the Las Vegas Aces have had a lot of success. The last three seasons going to the finals, to two semifinals appearances, her winning MVP. I mean, that's a lot on the shoulders of a young star. And it feels like last season that all kind of collapsed on her. She's focused. And so is Brianna Stewart as she's pacing the way for Seattle now with nine points, four or five from the floor. Yeah, too much space for Brianna Stewart. Las Vegas is not identifying her right away in the half court and making sure she feels you physically. You could not give her that kind of room. The Aces shooting better than 53% from the floor. Their average goes up to 57 on that make from Jackie Young. Stewart, again, this time coming in is Teresa Plaisance. And if you switch on to Stewart, that's what she's going to do. With that wingspan, she can shoot about over just about anybody on the court. Asia Shepard, the number 23 overall draft pick out of the WNBA, coming over from Virginia Tech. And you see Seattle out of that break, bringing more pressure to the basketball. They bought two defenders on that possession to Kelsey Plum. They're going to try to get the ball out of her hands, force Vegas to play a little faster than they want, maybe create some turnovers. And that's what they need is a big shot and bucket as Jantel Lavender checks into the ball game and knocks down a shot. And Jantel Lavender has made her career on those kind of shots right there. It's usually a long two. I don't know if that was a two or a three. <laughs> what a move, Jackie Young. Skirt, skirt. Seattle could use a timeout just to talk about Jackie Young. There hasn't been a matchup on the floor for her. Under two minutes to go. In the opening quarter of the Aces' home opener, they have a 22-14 advantage as the McBegore off the mark there. Into Wilson. Wilson working away, bodying McBegore and has her away. First couple of possessions against Ezzie. Asia wasn't able to get it to go, but you can't give her a heavy dose of single coverage. After a while, you have to make a decision. You see the attack mentality of the Las Vegas Aces early in this game. Jackie Young looks fly, strong, the hezzy move to the rack for Jackie. And then here, post-entry, step through for Asia, easy. 
Well, Jackie Young is just one of those players who's been asked to play a number of different roles when Bill Lambeer was the head coach. She had points came off the bench, flourished in that role, but we see what she could do as a starter in this group play on the floor. There's the Erica Hamby, and she's off the mark. We talked about Gray, the addition, along with Gabby Williams, Brianne January. Tiffany Prince, though, another one of those steely veterans for this group. And this, again, is a franchise built to win now. Well, and there's more depth for Seattle, right? You add Breon January, her championship experience, her defense, the defense of Gabby Williams. That's a big area for Seattle. They were a middle-of-the-road team on that end of the floor. And I like Lavender's experience and how poised she is. Noel Quinn in her second season as the head coach of this group. Very confident about this bunch and always feeling comfortable when you have the big three. But like you mentioned, LaChina, adding those extra pieces of depth only make them stronger when you're trying to make deep runs in the playoffs. Yeah, Seattle lost a bit of their grit defensively when Alicia Clark and Natasha Howard left this team. They've gotten some of that back in January and Gabby Williams. That pass deflected. Three to go on the shot clock. Got to get it up. And Lavender with a hand in her face off the mark and a shot clock violation. Good team defense by the Aces there, making it difficult on that possession. And now back-to-back -back turnovers for the Storm. Ten point advantage, Jackie Young with eight points. She adds two more with the kiss off the glass. And just one-on-one -on -one explosive moves to the rim. Prince, who had 13 points, five of six from the floor in the opening game of the season. And Prince being guarded by the taller. Hamby, the switch there. Jackie Young fouls her on the make, and it's a triple. She'll get a chance at a four-point play. And this is what you get when Epiphany Prince comes into the game. She's a bucket, gets a little screen, and if you don't get there in time, that jumper is automatic. Hamby goes under. I mean, and Jackie Young tried to get out there. But that's good focus by Epiphany. Second personal foul whistled against Jackie Young as the, on the, review the officials. For a three point shot. We'll take a look at that three-point shot by Epiphany Prince. But you mentioned just the veteran presence on the floor for Seattle. 15.6 seconds remaining in this first quarter. I mean, I that looks like clearly behind the three-point line That's to me. review. It's confirmed. It's three-point shot made. We have one for Prince. So the three is good. And another look at it once more. Yeah, that's well behind three. But thank you for the review. <laughs> but again, a tough shot and low in the shot clock. She was able to get it off, and now a chance to draw her team within six. Just a lot of poise from Prince. When she enters the game, you just feel this calmness. So consistent, very low maintenance. And someone they've come to rely on in Seattle. In her 13th season in the league out of Rutgers. Plum launches it, no good. The rebound. Trying to get a hand on it. Can a shot get up before the buzzer? No. A quick start to this ball game in Las Vegas. The Aces with a 26-18 lead after one. Coverage of the WNBA brought to you by Google. I am here with Brianna Stewart. Stewie, I know that one of the focuses coming into this game was the defensive end, and Vegas is shooting just under 60% from the field. What needs to change? Uh, we're letting them get too many paint, paint touches, old boards. Um, really, they're really active, and we're not disrupting anything. 
you are in a rhythm to start this game on the offensive end, but your team really isn't. What needs to happen on that end of the floor? I think we just need to continue to shoot the ball with confidence. We need to continue to push the pace. Vegas likes to push it. We like to push it. Um, score or stop, we got to go. Last thing is happy Mother's Day to you. What does it mean to have your daughter Ruby right now in the crowd watching you play? Uh, it means the world for me to have Ruby here. Hopefully she's sleeping because it's bedtime, but uh, happy Mother's Day to my mom and all the mothers out there. And just thank you. Thank you so much, Dewey. We do have a snoop cam on Ruby in the stands. And look, she's up, so not heating. Uh, mom's orders, she, she got a little milk, and she's fired up and ready to go. With mom number two, <laughs> Marta. Yeah. She's like, listen, I'm staying up until the score changes. I got to make sure we get the lead before I take any kind of nap. Well, certainly happy that Magbo Gore was able to get her first two points of the game, pulling within six, and now they can come even closer off that defensive rebound, Prince off the screen. And we saw this the other day versus Minnesota. Seattle put their bench in the game, and they seem to give them a boost, some energy, a lift. The second unit just plays a little differently, different style. Breon January, her leadership. We talked about Epiphany Prince, Lavender, another veteran. Just a calming force coming off of the bench for the Storm. Seattle again working down that shot clock. Lavender with great position there in that mismatch, and she'll go to the line. As Asia Shepard whistled for the personal foul. Lavender in her 11th season in the league. Yeah, Jantel has battled some injuries the last couple of seasons. But it's held Max Wednesday at 8 Eastern on CBS Sports. The Liberty take on the sky. Then Saturday, we start at 3 Eastern on ABC. Mercury Storm followed by Chicago and Minnesota at 8 over on NBA TV. For more on these games, please go to NBA, WNBA.com or visit the WNBA app. Interesting games the first weekend, right? Young Liberty get a win over Connecticut. Sabrina Yonescu and company. The Atlanta Dream getting a road win at Dallas, a team that made the, the playoffs a season ago. Wow, for the number one overall pick in Ryan Howard and her great debut. How about Candace Parker and the defending champion Chicago Sky with a dub and a great performance from the vet as well? It was Jordan Canada who ruined that game for the Chicago Sky. They look like they had it in hand, but the L.A. Sparks, I said this before the season started, mm. the Sparks are ready for a championship run. Love the depth of talent on that squad and how they're playing. So hungry. And you think about the new piece that they received in the offseason because of free agency as Liz Cambage now over with the Sparks. Open look for Sydney Colson in the corner. She drains it. Jackie Young is doing everything right now. She's scoring the basketball, finding her open teammates. Good spread offense there. Sydney Colson not known for her three-point shooting, but she can knock it down. Lavender gives it over to Prince. Albert at the top of the key, and the Aussie just short. And a couple of aces scurrying down for the rebound. Colson responsible for the aces' first three ball of the game. Asia Wilson back in, already with eight points and six rebounds. Jackie Young leading all scorers with ten. And that's what you do against Jackie Young. You put Breon January on her and let her go to work defensively. But going back to that last possession, a little hezzy again from the top of the key by Jackie Young. Defense just not responding. And on the help off, Talbot slow to get to Colson. Eight to go on the shot clock on the inbound. There's the rookie Kirsten Bell who turns it over into the hands of the Storm. Talbot fighting, kicks it back out to McLegore, who has a dead-on look, can't hit. And now Wilson corralling her seventh rebound. Colson, a little hesitation, surveying. Well, the Aces had so much success in the paint last season, they've carried that over again this season. 
as it's off the mark. Stewie pushing pace. Well, don't miss a second of action this season with the newly updated WNBA League Pass. Stream more games live and get access to every game on demand for the low price of $25. Scan the QR code on your screen now to try it for free. I need a little tutorial on the new app. <laughs> Pull that thing up. I'm like, wait, where am I right now? There's so much to it. Like, there's so many layers right there, just like it was in that cut to the basket for Lloyd as she's off the mark and it will go to the charity stripe. They want to find a way to get Jewel Lloyd going. Already three points in nine minutes in this ball game. We talked about the sensational 2021 campaign for her and the star continuing to illuminate for Lloyd. Yeah, Jewel just continues to come into her own, you know, and when you play on a team that has three great core players. You just kind of take form and do whatever is asked of you night in and night out. And Jewel has done what Seattle is needed. But last year, I don't think she got enough credit for what she did on both ends of the floor. She had to guard the other team's best player night in and night out. You know, was outstanding in terms of her field goal percentages. When you look at her career, um, you know, she just continues to blossom. And this year, she'll have some help on defense. Career highs in all. And Breon January is one of those players you mentioned that can help her out. But I go back to that 37-point performance against Phoenix. I mean, she was dropping buckets left and right. And Noelle Quinn said, well, that's what we want her to do more of. Just be free on the offensive end to do what she does. And Jewel gets that freedom from Noelle. The pull up from Stewart, no good, but going to get that rebound determined there was Mac Begore for the putback. Good activity there from Mac Begore, and really what the key to success is for her is playing off of Brianna Stewart. How is the defense playing Stewart, and how can I benefit from that? Hamby with the spin move on the baseline, gets her own rebound. And a traveling violation as she was relentless on that end, and the crowd not feeling that call. I thought there was a possible over the back. I didn't see travel. Sue Bird wasting no time to get the ball across half court. Under six minutes to go in the half. And with 5.53 remaining, we'll step aside here from Las Vegas. over the past week and for good reason check out amaya the junior reporter at the las vegas media day with her tiny microphone in hand might i add get the scoop on all that encompasses the aces baby microphone you see in that picture there that's dierica's mom carla on the right and she asked her mom are you the wnba logo <laughs> And, but, you know, Dierica said, if you think I'm the logo, then yeah. You know. <laughs> but you had to have heard the WM. Yeah. She, did, she, she didn't quite finish it out. She, she knew how to say WM. But she said, you know what, I'm going to, you know, take a step back, technical difficulties, and let's run it back one more time. Five-year-old Amaya, who was a great personality in the Wubble, and everybody got a chance to know her. And she's like, everybody's kid on the Aces. Seattle coming out in a zone defense on that possession and that basket waved off so no good for the aces shot clock violation yeah las vegas looks stumped by that zone defense and good call by seattle i mean they've been able to penetrate the paint really at will for most of this game so see if the zone will keep them out and force them to prove that they can be a three-point shooting team. Well, right now, the Aces have to try to slow down this 10-3 run for the Storm. And Aisha Wilson talked about, hey, this is going to be a game of runs. Trying to extend that lead, though, there is Chelsea Gray with the and one. They just made some incredible individual plays. And right there, Chelsea Gray, we know her to be crafty off of the bounce, using that strength with the crossover and the fadeaway jumper and gets the roll. Well, Chelsea Gray, who is known for handing out dimes, but also she's tough on Don in terms of active players having seen action in 164 games now. Obviously, the great Don Staley 
pacing the way. Jewel Lloyd off the mark. Hamby comes up with it. Plum doesn't have numbers still. Quickly across court. Stewie on her. Goes baseline. And there is that double on Plum. She is asking for a foul. Very aggressive there by Brianna Stewart and Sue Bird. But she kept her dribble alive here. Right there, rejects the screen. Stewart, she might have got a little body there. Overthrown on the inbound, and they turn it over. Seattle, the four-time WNBA champions. Last one coming in 2020. I think many question whether Sue Bird would continue on. And we've asked her, hey, you know, what's the deal? She said, well, this is, you know, quite possibly my last season. But as long as I've got something good to give, I'm going to keep on going. Yeah, nothing definitive from Sue Bird. No. <laughs> we asked her on record today. So this is likely the last season, but you just never know. You never and know. And you don't want to have to close the door and then open it back. We've seen that happen before. <laughs> Tom Brady. <laughs> she said, I want to try to do the Candace Parker treatment, where it's just I'm mulling over the decision as to whether I want to do it or not. That one kept in bounds by De'Erica Hamby to poke it back in. Off and running. How about Stewie saying no bail? Wide open look in transition. Jewel Lloyd. So sweet splash. And just like that, you see the impact of Seattle's big three. Defense by Brianna Stewart. Back to Jewel Lloyd. They've been running a lot of their offense with just those three players trying to get this team in a rhythm. Wilson trying to answer on the other end. What Achilles injury, says Brianna Stewart, running back, chasing Jackie Young, and keeps the ball in play for the point guard, Sue Bird, to get it to Jewel Lloyd. No defense there. That is what Seattle likes to do, and Vegas has not allowed them to really get on a run and given them the space. They gave Brianna Stewart a couple looks in, in transition, but not very many. Driving the lane and finding the wraparound pass to Asia Wilson, and that's just tough to defend. That's a great pass by Chelsea Gray. Again, another points in the paint offensive play for Vegas. And really good catch and muscle by Wilson. Hamby going up to get that rebound, smacking it down. Now 10 boards for Hamby on the night. Seven-point ball game with just over three minutes to go. And Chelsea Gray looking back to the storm bench. It's hard to guard Gray when she's playing this way because she uses her body. She's tough. I mean, Jewel Lloyd is an, is an outstanding defender. But when you get that fadeaway shot going, it's, you can't get to it. It's hard to get in her view. And Stewie, who has been bumping around with a number of black jerseys, finally gets the call. Kelsey Plum whistled for the personal foul. But... On and away from the basketball, Brianna Stewart takes a lot of contact. And that's what teams do. I mean, that's the only thing really that you can do with Brianna Stewart is try to get in her space and be physical with her. But she's handled that well today. A little screen and Hamby corralling another board. Speeding Jackie Young catches her footing, rolls out. And Stewart comes away with it. Bird finds Mac Begore. Excellent delivery by Sue Bird. The all-time assist leader in the WNBA is Sue Bird in year 19, always finding ways to get her teammates involved. Tough shot for Wilson, trying to track it down was Plum. And some contact there. Well, this is what Sue Bird does. Drop dimes, assists, helpers. Mac McGore with the finish. Welcome back to Las Vegas, where the combination of Asia Wilson and Jackie Young has been lethal on offense for the Aces. Asia Wilson has already had eight shot attempts. She only had eight in game one against Phoenix. And then Jackie Young 
boy, the muscle, the strength, the balance, the athleticism, the way she can make one-on-one -on -one plays, just a tough guard for anyone. These two players have got it going early, Tiffany. Indeed, they do. You see the numbers up there, and that's what's helped propel Las Vegas to this 36-29 advantage. And one thing that Becky Hammond said to us was, no, I want Asia Wilson to have more than eight shot attempts. And the other night, that's all she had against Phoenix. So she said she was definitely going to call more plays for her early. We've seen that happen. But also, Asia will make a living on the class and go and get the buckets. And what did she say to us? Asia's going to get her shot. Yeah, that's right. She told us that pregame. I'm going to get my shots. I'm the black hole, and everybody knows it. But she has uh, come out with a lot of confidence and, and very aggressive. She was sincere about it, too, oh, yeah. she, was, she was so sincere about it. Williams coming down with the rebound. Williams, one of the two players who just kind of quickly acclimating themselves to this storm system as a quick timeout is taken on the floor. And we will step aside with them. 148 remaining in the first half. Our next WNBA matchup is Saturday afternoon on ABC and the ESPN app. Diana Tarazi and the Mercury square off against Sue Bird and the Storm. Coverage begins at 3 Eastern. That's a repeat of last year's second round playoff game. And that came down to an overtime decision where Phoenix was able to boot the storm from the playoffs. Meanwhile, Brianna Stewart, who got off to a hot start in that first quarter, has uh, since cooled off here in the second period. Yeah, I expect Seattle to try to get her to the ball in this possession, and that's what they did. Got her into the post with a smaller Chelsea Gray, but nice help by Asia Wilson to come down and contest. 90 seconds to go in the half. Jackie Young with the look, the three. Yes, ma'am. I mean, so early submission for <laughs> most improved based on what I've seen in a game and a half. Jackie Young is free. McGore going right back to Stewart. They feed her. Stewart getting her own rebound. The putback is yes. But she had to work for that. Mm -hmm. Had a defender in front of her in the post, someone behind her, had to muscle up. You mentioned this earlier. The defense is being extremely physical with Stewie, but she's fighting through it in the last couple of minutes. 5 of 11 from the four. 13 points for Brianna Stewart. There's Gabby Williams. Trying to take a gamble there with Wilson, and she's called for the personal foul. And she will pick up the foul there, but that's the kind of mentality that Noel Quinn wants Gabby Williams to have. She wants their offense to be fed by their defense, and she's the player, one of the players that they brought in to try to help them do that. Well, Williams, who missed last season due to her overseas commitment, and so there's stoppage on the floor as Chelsea Gray needs some attention on the bench to be bleeding and that's a great time for both of these coaches to get a chance to corral them for the final minute of this first half as we listen in with our wires you gotta be on this side again so you're just gonna set it jewel bang tap head that thing roll it pop if you're open shoot it not get to the room we're sending a bonus no fouls, no more fouls, no more fouls. We just sense a different level of confidence from Noelle Quinn in year two, in a full year two, and talking to her today at practice. I mean, you think about taking over a team a little later in the season, the way she did last year. She's got her own staff this season, um, you know, had a full training camp, and is really optimistic about this squad. Let's see if they heed the advice of their head coach and not fouling here. Trying to just make it tough defensively. An open look for Chelsea Gray for three off the mark. Brianna Stewart comes up with her fifth rebound to go with her 13 points tonight. And that's good defense for Seattle because that's a lower percentage shot than maybe. It was a good job by Plum to get him that look, but it was a lower percentage shot than you could have gotten elsewhere. About a five-second differential between shot clock and game clock. Double team from Bird, Jackie Young, and a kick ball whistled. So. 
Well, coming up on the State Farm Halftime Report, players who caught our eye. Well, certainly there were a number around the league in opening weekend. And how about the Mystics in Minnesota? We'll tell you how that one ended. We'll join Monica McNutt, Carolyn Peck, and Rebecca Lobo at the half. Final seconds here. Jewel Lloyd launches it. No good. The tip back won't count. And after two quarters play here in the desert, you see the stars have already come out and provided life here in Las Vegas. 13 for Stewie, 10 for Asia Wilson as the Aces lead at the half. Little shot overlooking the Las Vegas Strip and all the stars in the building. The LA Clippers head coach Tyron Lou. How about Raiders tight end Darren Waller also making an appearance to check these elite stars? But nothing says Las Vegas like the Blue Man Group for halftime entertainment, huh? Nothing says we might have a little extra cash to put into this halftime like the Blue Man Group. <laughs> got the juice so does LaChina Robinson on Tiffany Green 39-33 at the half and when you look back to that first half what was it that helped the Aces pace the first two quarters it was definitely the points of the paint Las Vegas was very aggressive about not only on the drive but on all of their offensive possessions of getting a Seattle was slow on some of their rotations to help on backside and then when that Las Vegas offense is up wide and high it leaves so much room on the inside to operate Jackie Young was unstoppable um, on many of those possessions and just the muscle and the power of Asia Wilson. She's had to play in the crowd. She's had to play with defenders around her, but she's found a way to make plays. That was a great look at the greatest delivery brought to you by DoorDash and the leading scores for both teams. A couple of double digit ones for the Aces. Meanwhile, Brianna Stewart, the lone above 10. And when you look at this, Rebecca Lobo talked about this at halftime, but other players have to get involved. Brianna Stewart has gotten off to a good start. Jewel Lloyd will need to to score more points. Ezzy Magbagor was three for nine. And that's a win for Las Vegas. If you can get Ezzy Magbagor to be taking outside shots and to be second in shot attempts in the first half, that's what Vegas wants to do. Keep Seattle out of that flow. And currently, they're waiting to start this second half, fixing the net, making sure it's all intact and ready to go. You see those tugs there. One time for my man fixing the equipment here and ready to go to start the third quarter. Again, these two teams very familiar with one another. Las Vegas took two of three from Seattle last year. The storm swept the aces in that 2020 WNBA final. The other thing that we saw Seattle do in the second quarter, because they did take away some of those points in the paint, they started to crowd the paint. So Las Vegas is probably going to have to hit some outside shots. They're only two for nine from long range. They'll have to loosen that interior defense up some. And that's one of the marquee points that Becky Hammond wants to see a part of her team is being able to let it fly from long range a little bit more frequently. Meanwhile, four of 16 from beyond the arc for the Storm. Well, Sue Bird has made a three in the last 29 games and make it now 30 there with that make. Yeah, just enough of a screen to get Sue Bird open. Really good execution. Her first points of the ball game, and so she's another part of that big three that they want to get geared up here in the second half. Tough pass, last touch by the Storm. Good offensive possession here by Seattle. You see Sue Bird coming off of a double screen on the baseline. Just enough time to get that shot off. Magmagore trying to stay vertical. She's called for the personal foul as Asia Wilson will take another trip to the charity strike. Again, I love Asia Wilson in space. I feel like there were a lot of moments in her career where she was being asked to be a back-to-the-basket post player. But right here, you give her enough room to operate off of the bounce, she gets to show her versatility. And you put Ezzie Magbagor in a compromising position where she's not fully vertical and is going to get called for that foul. And one of the things that Becky Hammond said that she wanted to do was make sure that everybody could be free-flowing, but also always attacking the basket. And so 
we've heard the Aces players just talk about how much more free and loose they feel in this new system. And to your point, they could just be jacking up threes right now because Becky gave them the green light to do that, but attacking the paint is so important to getting shots from the three-point line, and they've done that early. Matt Bagor, who had that one partially deflected there by Wilson. She brings it across half court. And that's a change to Asia Wilson's role on this team. She is going to have to anchor at the five spot defensively. The clear out for Hamby and a path to the basket unmatched there as Hamby now with eight points, shooting 50% from the floor. Ace is switching defensively. De'Erica Hamby at the four has the ability to switch out and guard a guard. Hamby on Lloyd. Plum has it picked away. Good hands by Sue Bird. And Hamby taking it off the dribble. That one had a hand on it by Mac Bagore. Attacking again. Gray, who may have had an open look, the mid-range shot from Plum won't fall. Brianna Stewart coming back the other way. And another triple Ooh. from Seattle. This is a player that hasn't even been playing live basketball very long. Coming off of that Achilles surgery that she had postseason in October, said it was such a difficult decision for her. She could have tried to play through it. Decided to get surgery, and <laughs> Asia Wilson has been involved on both ends to start this third quarter. Playing through contact, but Gabby Williams had that one stripped away by Chelsea Gray. The point guard on the attack, and she leaves it short. Lloyd comes up with it. Storm has numbers. The assist over, and Plum got in the passing lane. And on both ends of the floor, the defensive effort from Plum, and then she assists Hamby on the make on the other end. And it's been a long night for Kelsey Plum. I mean, she has been trapped on offense. She's been flustered, hasn't been able to settle in. But this is called not giving up on the play. Getting back defensively, that is usually a dunk on the connection from Sue Bird to Brianna Stewart. And then the pass to Hamby for the easy one. And De'Erica Hamby, who... Paced the way with 24 points in that last game, now has 10 points. Meanwhile, Kelsey Plum is just finding ways to get involved. Five assists to your point there of trying to make an impact on the offensive end. Number of accomplished players on the court. We're looking at the 2015 WNBA Rookie of the Year. Remember that she was the first Overall pick out of Notre Dame, and Jewel Lloyd connects on both free throws to bring the storm within six. That spin move to the basket, tough to defend, and too strong, though, from Wilson. Superb. And Stewie finding an open. Gabby Williams can't connect. And Lavender whistled for the over the back. And that shot by Gabby Williams is one that Noelle Quinn feels confident she'll be able to knock down. You know, we know what Gabby Williams can do on the defensive end. She's back to her, what she calls her true position at the three spot. And what she has done in international competition has been beyond impressive. And having that comfort on the offensive end is what we've seen develop in these last couple years of her career. Well, she was able to win the EuroLeague Finals MVP along with the Defensive Player of the Year over in Hungary playing with Team Sopron. And great defense there from Gabby Williams all up in the grill of Asia Wilson. And Gabby finds her former teammate from UConn and the Huskies connect. Great decision by Gabby Williams, great court awareness and no communication there by the Aces. You can't lose Brianna Stewart. That one deflected away. Sue Bird quickly fouled. Starts on the defensive end. The lockdown possession for Gabby Williams. She can handle in the open floor. 
and right here makes a wise decision to pitch back to Brianna Stewart who slots and spots up for the three. That's easy money. Brianna Stewart now with 19 points, but Gabby Williams, just one of those players that really anticipated seeing play this season again. It had been like 599 days since her last WNBA game, again, missing all of last year. The French national team winning bronze in the 2020 Olympics. She's an outstanding athlete. What a whip of a pass from Jackie Young and then caught up with January and Wilson. So the last few possessions, you've seen that defense by Seattle, what they're hoping to see from this new personnel. The turnover created by Gabby Williams right there. Breon January getting in there, mixing it up, tie it up. January does not get enough credit for what she has done in this league defensively. One of the best to ever do it. To me, I would trust her guarding one through five. Put your five <laughs> player on the floor and tell him to get open with Breon January on it. It won't happen. Standing at a five foot eight, <laughs> Breon January, seven time WNBA all defensive team. With a black belt in karate. Yes. Please yes. add that to the resume. <laughs> Please and thank you. Jump ball here with Asia Wilson quickly won by the taller Wilson, but off the hands of Hamby. And the Storm get it right back. Three point ball game with just over five minutes to go in this third quarter. The Aces have led by as many as 12. But a solid defensive effort from the visitors. Brianna Stewart had a matchup advantage with Jackie Young on her in the post. She wanted that possession on the backside. And Asia Wilson showing you a new and improved part of her game. She had been working on it from some time, but feeling more confident stepping out from three. And that next level for Asia Wilson will elevate her even more. Already has an MVP designation in her young career, but she starts hitting a three consistently. Watch out. And January answering back on the other end. Breon January, originally from Spokane, Washington, her final season in the WNBA, and gets to do it in her home state. We've got a battle in Vegas. Asia Wilson sizing up the long ball, gets it to go, and Breon January from about two steps behind three, nails it. ESPN's coverage of the WNBA, presented by Google, is part of tip-off, presented by CarMax. The Love Your Car Guarantee from CarMax. Coming in June, we have some great stories of the 50 years of Title IX. Some of the features you can check out are 37 Words, a four-part series starting later next month. How about that 30 for 30 Dream On, a three-part documentary, documentary premiering June 15th on ESPN and LaChina, I know you had an opportunity to actually view that at the latest ESPN W Summit. Yeah, I got to pre-screen Dream On and get the awards out because director producer Kristen Lapis did an outstanding job telling the story of our 96 women's national team. This team, what they did, giving up 15 months of their lives to train. They went, they went 52 and 0 in the year before they even got to the Olympics. <laughs> then won gold in dominant fashion, and they opened the door for creating the WNBA. That team showed that there was an interest in professional women's basketball here in the United States, and the WNBA was born. Shout out to Val Ackerman, who made a lot of that happen. They were one of the most exciting players to watch as Talbot knocks down that shot to bring them within two. But I mean, you just think about, we saw the smiling faces of our colleague and Hall of Famer Rebecca Lobo on that. Dawn Staley, who just won a national championship with the Gamecocks. And then she returns the favor and wins gold medal as the head coach. And Sue Bird, among others, a part of that team, five-time Olympian Sue Bird, might I add. Just the dominance continues worldwide as Team USA taking home gold. 
And we see Seattle really climbing back into this game. Their ball movement looks good and crisp early in this one. This will be a charge on Kelsey Plum. Again, the impact of Breon January, understanding angles and how to get her body set in legal defensive position. We should be counting up the number of charges a player gets throughout their career. No, I'm dead serious. This just speaks to how we don't value the defensive end of the floor enough. But I bet Breon, Breon January is top five in that category. All time. I would put, I would put I'm not going to say I'm going to put money on it, but I am in Vegas. <laughs> well, the historians and statisticians might be able to go back and look at it or perhaps moving forward. But another way that Seattle has been able to get back in this ball game is strong three-point shooting. They hit four in the first half. They're five of nine here in the third quarter. Yeah, Vegas was able to make their defense presence felt more in the first half. Their physicality, not giving them as much space, but we see some space. And the three-pointers going up as a result. Ball bouncing around a number of different hands. Hamby brings it over. And that was plays off with the block on the backside. Mm -hmm. Ninth-year player out of LSU. First with the Aces signed on a free agency. Colson who knocked down the three back in the first half, trying it again. Off the mark. That one rims off for Talbot. Blaisons and great ball movement on the part of the Aces. In that transition. Really quick by Las Vegas end to end. And De'Erica Hamby is going to run hard every possession. And that looked like it was all ball. Vegas wanted a call, but Piff got it clean. Timeout on the floor will step aside quickly as well. There's more to the game with Google. Let's take a look at what people are searching for. How about the searches of Las Vegas Aces coach have doubled in the U.S. since tonight's game started. That's the impact of Becky Hammond as she's wired tonight. We'll listen in. Technical difficulties there with Becky Hammond, but her team holding tight to a two-point lead in this third quarter. And what Becky was saying to her team in that timeout is that she wanted to see the ball move. She said it will come back to you. But also in that huddle, she was listening to her players, and that's something they talked about, how she lets them give her feedback on what's happening in the game and what they see. First few minutes for Rashonda Gray checking in the ball game for the Storm. And I found it interesting because obviously spending eight seasons as the Spurs assistant coach in the NBA, she says, well, you know, I, I work for the players. So, I mean, this is like an open dialogue. Gray hands it off to January. And January is fouled as she was actually horse collared there by Asia Shepard, the rookie. There has just felt like a calm and a steadiness since Breon January has come into this game. And that's where the depth of this team, I think, is greater. Not only than we, we saw it last season, but maybe the last few when it comes to the level of experience that Seattle can put on the floor off the pond. And Prince is fouled going up on the shot. Excellent body control there by Epiphany Prince to get to the free throw line. And as Prince shoots two here, I, I want to go back to kind of circle up that point about Breon January being here. I mean, they haven't been, she and Gabby Williams haven't been with the team very long. I mean, it's been a handful of days. So they come into the franchise, get back in the States. They have to go through protocols of getting onboarded with the team. And because she is an experienced player, 
it helps all the more walking right into a new Well, because franchise. that's what these women do year-round, right? They leave here, they go play for other teams overseas, they get acclimated to a completely different se uh, a completely different system as that young gets to the rim. But then they return from their overseas teams and they've got to get ready for WNBA, get yourself in another mindset. I mean, this is what they do year-round. I mean, so many player teams are still waiting for their players to return and are not at full strength. When you think about Kia Stokes, currently not with the team for the Aces. She's still completing her overseas commitments. Raquana Williams, out. she was questionable going into tonight's game with a left foot. And that's going to give him a lot more three-point shooting mm -hmm. when Raquana Williams is available once again. And, and defense, yeah. because she had an outstanding defensive season last year. And Mercedes Russell on the other end for Seattle. They'll be excited to get her back there, judging maybe by mid-June that she will return to the squad. Um, Breon January is called with a carry. Very rare to see that call. Mm -hmm. But you're right, Mercedes Russell will also help on that backside defense. I mean, 6'6". Six, six. I think shooting over 66% from the field last season. Mercedes Russell really starting to come in, into her own. That one tough shot contested by Talbot, and she commits the foul. And Young will go to the line. Well, Jackie Young, who had 10 points in that first half for Las Vegas, held to force so far in this quarter. And Jackie has quietly, and I say that because she lets her game do the talking, but has become a real force in this league. At six foot, you can put her in so many different positions on the floor. She's great at taking advantage at her one-on-one -on -one matchups. Her mid-range game has gotten better over time. Can rebound it, can deliver the ball. She was the number one overall pick in 2019. Yep. She can stuff the stat sheet. Three-point ball game here. And Epiphany Prince is there to answer and tie up the ball game. Look who's gotten Seattle back into this game. Mm -hmm. Look at the, the lineup. Mm -hmm. The experience and the veterans coming off the bench helping to steady. And then... Asia Shepard right here is going to get a screen and went for the okie doke on the handle by Epiphany Prince with the move pull up. Prince who shot 50% from long range last year and Prince now with nine points in just eight minutes of play. Let's take a look at the upcoming national TV schedule Wednesday on CBS Sports at 8 Eastern. The Liberty take on the sky. Then Saturday we start on ABC at 3 Eastern with the Mercury and Storm, followed by the sky and links over on NBA TV. One-point ball game. Seattle last led back in the first quarter when it was 7 to 6. Since then, it's been all Las Vegas. Great pass there, and taking the lead since the first quarter on that bucket of the Storms. Jantel Lavender delivering her first, fourth point of the game. January whistled for the foul, but we keep talking about the Steely veterans for Seattle. And Noel Quinn being able to trust them in these types of situations. The bench has done a great job. It's going 17 points tonight for the Storm. To pull this Seattle team neck and neck with the Aces. Colson knocking down a couple of free throws to swing the advantage back in favor of the home team. Prince, yes! 
Epiphany Prince has done her thing here in this second half. In the third quarter, Prince totaling 11 points in the ball game, making her presence felt on the court very efficient from the floor. She's dropped. Well, China, there was a seven point swing in favor of the Storm winning that third quarter. And being able to, as Asia mentioned, capitalize. Epiphany Prince has been a part of it, and Wilson there getting a hand on him in the defensive end. Plum coming back the other way to Strong. Hamby with the old board and open Jackie Young, and got it. But that started with the energy of De'Erica Hamby, who has 16 now, 16 rebounds in this game. Hamby, a problem on the board. She's got a double-double in this ball game, along with Wilson. Gray answering right back and tying this ball game back up to 61 apiece. I think they moved the rebound number for Hamby to 17. I thought I saw that at first, but yes, that's it. Gray looking inside to Wilson. And a little too aggressive there from Gray. Rashonda Gray. Shot goes up there to block by Asia Wilson. Gets off and running. Plum to the middle of the floor, and it's Hamby's energy there and on the kick out. How about a confident three from Jackie Young? Everyone on this team, as you continue to mention, Tiffany, is encouraged to take that three-point shot. Speaking of the three-point shot, dial it up right there. They're not supposed to confirm it, LaChonda. The fans inside, Michelob Ultra pumped up after the Aces stretching the lead out. They're excited in their home opener. Our next WNBA matchup is Saturday afternoon on ABC. Diana Taurasi and the Mercury square off against Sue Bird and the Storm. Coverage begins at 3 Eastern. You can also always find it on the ESPN app. And that's always a great matchup when Diana Taurasi is matched up against Sue Bird. Let's take a look at the Aces leading scores. A couple of them in double figure rebounds and points. We're talking about Asia Wilson and De'Erica Hamby. Yeah, Vegas has been dominant on the glass. They're plus 11 right now. That's the energy that has gotten them into transition, but also the defense of Asia Wilson has been anchoring this team in stretches where they really needed it. Brianna Stewart back on the floor. She went out to 224 mark in the third quarter, got a little rest before likely finishing out this fourth quarter. And Sue Bird whistled for the foul, trying to poke the ball away from Gray. And Sue Bird just one of those players who are just so endearing. You always get a chance to learn a little bit more about her and all that she's given to the game and still has a lot left here in season 19. So we got a hand on it and the steal getting it away as Gray was in trouble. Shonda Gray playing important minutes as Seattle again shorthanded in the post without Mercedes Russell. Gray a big strong tough post very physical. Plum whistled for the personal foul that's her fourth. First team foul of the quarter for the Aces. Williams surveying, puts it up short. Trying to wrestle that rebound away as it's tied up between Hamby and Gray. Both teams want it, both teams fighting, and we know it's gonna come down to perhaps the last possession in this ball game as it's a jump ball. Strategy is
is one thing, execution at this point of the game, and who can execute best. Hamby gets the advantage, off and running is Plum. Trailing her was young, but no need as the lay-in from Kelsey Plum. Just two of eight from the floor. But Plum has registered nine points and six assists. Loy, tough shot there. Snatching it down was Wilson. It has been a long and tough night for Jewel Lloyd against the Las Vegas Aces defense. She's guarding Young over to Wilson. Great matchup there with Stewie. And it's Asia Wilson winning that battle. A 7 nothing run for the Aces. Lloyd with a look. And yes, just like that, she says, OK, just wait. And they need that. Up. <laughs> they definitely need that from Jewel Lloyd. 11 triples knocked down tonight for the Storm. They shot 48% back on Friday. And this is the matchup we came to see. Two of the best players in the world in Brianna Stewart and Asia Wilson. If you let her get to that left hand, going to be a long night. Plum again. And landing awkwardly underneath the basket, being helped up by Wilson. Stewart. Whistled for her second personal foul. Trying to plead her case to the officials. Nothing doing as Kelsey Plum will get two shots. You love the way that Kelsey Plum has evolved her game. The NCAA women's record in terms of career points comes on the all-rookie team in the WNBA in 2017. And then after an injury, we mentioned she worked her way back and won the sixth woman of the year in 2021. Foul on the floor. And that foul's gonna be called on Gierka Hamby, and I'm looking at her. Gotta be exhausted. Not only has he had the primary defensive responsibility of Brianna Stewart, but he Again, has 17 rebounds. Amaya's mom has been busy tonight. <laughs> it's she and Jackie Young been on the floor the most. Nobody over 25 minutes for the storm. Lloyd with the shot clock winding down. Crossover City puts it up. Oh, yes! Woohoo! Just filthy tool, boy. Hello. Go Mamba. She can unleash. Plum on the reverse. Wilson with the old board. Kicks it out to Plum standing. Oh, it down. The offensive rebounding kickouts have hurt Seattle. And Vegas all over the glass. 40 to 27, winning that rebound advantage. And then Hamby stripping it away. Williams getting it right back all the way. ESPN's coverage of the WNBA is presented by Google, official WNBA changemaker and proud advocate of women in sports. Back here at Michelob Ultra Arena, Asia Wilson, the 2020 MVP, is shining bright here. Big lights, big stars. And it's happening on the defensive end for Asia Wilson, playing the five this season. She has to hold it down on the interior. What does that do? Get Vegas off and running on the offensive end. But Asia Wilson has incredible instincts and reads the defensive end so well. And Becky Hammond really trusting her to do even more on that end of the floor, really protecting the rim for her team. 
A 14-5 run for Las Vegas. Hamby ties a career high, grabbing the 18th rebound of the ball game. What we're seeing from De'Erica Hamby is heart and hustle. Yeah. She yeah. is going to outplay you every time down the floor and to have almost 20 rebounds in this game. Wow. Eighth season out of Wake Forest. Here goes Wilson going to work against Lavender. We have not seen a lot of Ezzy Magbabor in this second half. She's going to enter the game now, but I believe she's only played four minutes in the second half. Well, she went out at the 646 mark of the third quarter. She's currently at the scorer's table. Jantel Lavender picking up her fourth personal foul. And Seattle now has four team fouls in the quarter. And on that make, you hear the horn, and there's McLevore checking back in. And they all give you something different. Lavender took a shot on that pick and pop from the outside. She opens up the offense, but Ezzie McLevore may give you more length on the inside defensively. But again, going back to that rotation at the five, that's going to be really important for Seattle until they get fully healthy again. 10-point ball game, under five minutes to go. Two playoff contenders trying to start out their season strong. Jackie Young losing the handle, goes to the floor to get the ball. And Young able to call a timeout here to maintain possession. This is how it's been all ball game. And while both of these teams were among the best scoring offenses last year, Seattle held to just 66 points so far in this ball game. And you have to credit the defense from the Aces. Let's listen in to the Storm Huddle. like Noel Quinn was calling on offense for a horn set where they may look to go high low and then defensively they may show zone and then go to man or show man and go to zone I'm not really clear on their defensive play calls but that's what it sounded like they were going to do and it's hard to tell in that possession, but they may be looking to mix it up and sprinkle some more of that zone in, which I thought was effective for them against the Aces when we saw it in the first half. Noel Quinn's crew down by double digits. And that's Stewie finds MacBagore. MacBagore gets on the board. Remember, she had a solid first half. She adds two more, eight points total for Ezzy McBegore. And that was the high low that Noel Quinn talked about in the huddle, getting the nice seal on the interior, and then Ezzy McBegore being active on the backside. The bounce pass, finding McBegore again, unselfish. Lloyd there to pick it up, and baseline mid-range jumper balls. Yeah, Drew Lloyd has started to heat up in the latter part of this game, but you mentioned it early. It's been Las Vegas' defense, how scrappy they have been. Tenacious. I mean, Sue Bird had six assists in the first half. I think she's only had one in the second. They've been disruptive. Plum, who has had herself a solid second half. Hard ball to the floor for Breon January. 
And the foul called against Kelsey Plum. That's her fit. Yeah, Kelsey Plum's got to be careful. She's a little frustrated with some of the defensive attention and physicality she's received. And she's kind of forced some of these looks at the rim at that time, got the foul call. Beyond January can frustrate you. So back-to-back -back turnovers for Las Vegas, capitalizing and taking advantage. And they're going to go right back to that same play. Mm -hmm. Well, it's Seattle's scored four straight off of it. They get it into Lloyd. Lloyd with the step back fall away. Drew Lloyd just makes it look so pretty and effortless and sweet. 19 points for Drew Lloyd. The 6 0 run has brought the storm back within four and stretch it back out to six after that gray mate. Miscommunication there in the half court between Matt Gore and Lloyd. They hand it over. Well, this is the type of home opening feel that I think new owner Mark Davis was hoping for. He's sitting courtside hoping that the Becky Hammond era can be completed with two wins to open this 2022 season. And an out of sorts offensive set. A really good recovery defensively by Ezzy Magbagor. Oh. And the outstretched turnover. arms of the 6 4 center couldn't get to it. Yeah, both teams with a couple turnovers here, but Seattle with two one in a row on the offensive end. Six point ball game with just over two minutes to go in regulation. Plum, a dart into Wilson, double team. Hamby quickly gets it over to Young. Gray working on Sue Bird. No. Ooh. And a jump ball. The intensity just continuing to pick up. Now in this late game, I mean, we start, get get off to a, a great start. It was like the Kentucky Derby, right? Possessions <laughs> they were off and running. Really tight, and the game has slowed down quite a bit, of, almost like a slugfest. A lot of fouling, physicality. And there's the old Aces owner, Mark Davis, also one of the Las Vegas Raiders, done a great job in making investments in this franchise. Good hustle there by Sue Bird, who's able to get that timeout called. And see, Seattle needs this timeout to regroup on the offensive end as we've seen some struggles here in the last couple possessions. Minus Jewel Lloyd, of course. <laughs> One timeout remaining for Seattle. Las Vegas has two. We'll just take this moment to wish a happy Mother's Day to all the moms around the country and of course in our ESPN crew as well. You see some of those familiar faces. Our Holly Rowe There's and Tiffany Stephanie Green White. And her oh, boys. Yeah. <laughs> our coordinating producer Sarah Gallero, Samantha Bononi and all of the wonderful women who help behind the scenes on camera to make this WNBA product what it is and continuing for leaps and bounds. I didn't see the, the Bobo Russian crew in those <laughs> photos, but Rebecca's got a whole trough of children yeah. <laughs> at home. But something Dierica said earlier about the impact of becoming a mother for her, she said it's given me a sense of purpose. She said her style of play has changed. She's always been aggressive, but displays with more of a sense of urgency since having Amaya. And I think that's for all mothers, just that extra motivation to be at your best every day. We appreciate you. Another rejection from Asia Wilson, who is playing in mid-season form right now. Another block. I mean, I don't even see how you put that up if you're Ezzy Magnabal. Five in total, off the steal, boom.
an eight-point ball game late here as Seattle needing to try to muster up something to get back in it. Let's go back to that last play. It's been the defense once again and just the anticipation of that defense there with the miscommunication between Sue Bird and Jewel Lloyd. And there's been some head scratching turnovers by Seattle in situations just like that. Bird trying to get it in. Tough inbound. McGore has it. Kicks it over. Good ball movement. Stewie on the move. And yes, fading away. And Brianna Stewart now with 21 points. Her team down six. Wanting to improve their defense, trying to come up with a stop here, and that's tough to slow down as Plum knocks down the 15-footer. Stewart off the mark. Moving and grooving the Nola. Chelsea Gray on the hand he couldn't finish. De'Erica Hamby wants that one back, but consistently. The first player down the floor on almost every possession. Chelsea Gray, middle of the floor, no book. Look, you gotta finish that one, Hamby. Forty-seven point four seconds to go. Jump ball, Hamby and Stewart. Tracking it down with Chelsea Gray staying inbounds. And milking time off the clock as Las Vegas closing in on another win. Oh, that's just a little excellent on the cake with that Gray three. to their feet inside Michelob Ultra Arena. The Becky Hammond era has gotten off to a fantastic start here in Las Vegas. They close out with an 85-74 victory in their home opener. Really impressive by the Las Vegas Aces, in particular on the defensive end. It's not easy to disrupt the Seattle Storm offense, but we saw a lot of misreads, miscues, just a Storm offense that was out of sorts. But again, all credit to the Aces.